What's going on traders? Bold statement right now. If you don't understand spreads and you don't know how to utilize them, you don't want to succeed in trading long term. So inside this video, I'm giving you the full spread tutorial breakdown on everything you need to know to pick up this strategy and start implementing it tomorrow for your 2022 trading. All I ask is subscribe, like the video, and if you really want to trade seven days for free with me, hit the link below. You get two live streams a day, indicators, courses, and more. Let's get into it though. Why? Why spreads? Why do I need to learn this, Matt? First off, options. They blow up your account overnight. Options are risky. They have a 100% loss, but they have unlimited profits. That's why you got into this. That's why you're on my channel. You like that idea of a thousand percent gains overnight sometimes. But that upside is getting smaller and smaller and smaller every day. Do you know why that upside is getting smaller? The amount you're making is getting smaller every day. Do you know why? It's time decay. It's what's killing your accounts. It's what's making sure you're not going to succeed this year next year and why you're gonna have to go through that learning curve which is so long to get to the other side is time decay is killer so how how do we go over that how do we beat time decay spreads let's go best video of 2022 because this is legendary the stuff that spreads can allow you to do is very exciting here's an example of a call credit spread as you can see limits the upside caps the downside pretty simple Here's everything else spreads allow you to do. Get into cheaper contracts for stocks you may not be able to afford like Tesla and Amazon option contracts. They have smaller gains. Not a terrible thing though. Smaller losses. Not a terrible thing. Minimal time decay. In some cases, on the last line, that time decay can be in your favor and create passive income. How many income streams do you have in your life? You need about seven or eight to be a millionaire and be ultra wealthy long term. So this could be number one, or number seven, who knows? Also in the middle, good risk to reward. And we're going to go over all of this. But if this is your first time, we're talking about spreads fully in depth, how to integrate them, how to put them on your brokerage, the risk rewards, the losses that could happen, the gains and everything. We're going over fully in depth. So first off, the cheaper part, and it can be your option trading savior because of all that stuff. And it can, if it is your option trading saver, it can keep you in the game long term because the longer you stay in for the first two years, the higher chance you have of seeing the possibilities long term for trading and options. Options are risky, they could take you out overnight, but spreads can limit those losses and hopefully keep you in the game. So first off, what is a spread? A debit spread is where instead of just buying the spy call right here, this is Robinhood, I got a spy call for $478, cost me $100. A debit spread is where I sell a call above it, and that's a bullish play. For calls, it's bullish, and a debit spread allows me to get into spy for a much cheaper option price now still a great possible risk reward which we'll talk about in a second and a credit spread is where you're flipping that so instead of selling the option higher on the call option chain you're selling the call lower which means you have a more expensive call option which means now you're short this option it's creating a credit in your account money in your account and you're long this option so you're buying that one so the difference between those is what we call a credit which is money you could possibly get as passive income through what we talked about earlier, the time decay scenario. And we'll talk about that more in depth later, but that's just a general overview on a spread. Instead of just buying options, when you buy, you sell an option as well. And where you sell it is really going to determine what type of spread it is and what type of outcome you can have, what type of income you can create, what type of protection you have. It's really crazy and it's really exciting. And so first off, how does it make it cheaper? Like I showed you earlier, this SPY call is 477. So if I bought that, it cost me $160. But if you're new, you got a $500 account, you should not be using 160 bucks on a trade. That's an easy way to blow up your account because guess what? Time decay is a mean mean person in this world and it wants to bully you around every single day so to limit the time decay to limit your downside and to get into plays 
without using your whole account, you can sell an option higher or lower. In this example, if you sold it higher at 478 strike, that would mean you're bringing in 100 bucks. It's credit into your account, so you split the difference. The difference between the two is now 60 bucks. So it's now costing you $60 to get into a SPY call instead of 160. So if you have a $500 account, you're not using 30% of your account, you're using about 10 to 12, which is pretty reasonable. I would say that would be right where I want to be when I'm taking a a pretty crazy trade. I mean, 10% is a lot sometimes. But again, as you can see, it makes everything affordable. The crazier thing is Tesla. I know. I'm not going to tell you not to trade Tesla. I'm going to tell you hopefully the safer way to do it, but I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice because like I said, I don't make it a sauce. I don't make it a lasagna and I'm not your mother, guys. You have to understand the risks and you have to click the buttons and take full responsibility of the outcome. So first off, Tesla. I know, 500 bucks. You can't afford this $900 call. But let's say you want to be dumb for the day. You want to use half your account in Tesla. We've all done it at some point. I'm not going to pretend like I haven't. You can sell the call higher. So the difference between those is what you pay for the option. Now it's a debit spread. So this debit spread is 200 bucks. We'll talk about everything, the risk reward, the downsides later. But I just want to show you, you can afford Tesla without blowing up your account. I mean, without going on margin, without using your whole account, uh, maybe half your account if you have a really small one, but it does make the crazy, crazy large stock price plays possible. So first off, smaller gains. Let's talk about how this can give you smaller gains. Like we talked about earlier, options. If I bought this 478 call on SPY and SPY went to $500, this call is going to be worth about $2,200, which is about a 2,000% gain, roughly. So 2,000% gain you're never going to see on a debit or credit spread. Any type of spread will never give you those amazing gains. But if you want to stay in the game, you should never chase any amazing gains. The amazing gains are what is going to keep you out of the game. When you swing for the fences, you end up blowing up your accounts once in a while. And when you blow up your account, it sets you back a long time. Personally, I just like to hit base hits, base hits, base hits, take the money home and not thinking about it. And then three months from now, my account goes from 30K to 60, maybe even 300K, which it has done in the past. So first off, the gains are not as great. You can see on the right side here, the max loss is $40, which is the cost to get into this spread. And then the max profit is 60. So if you... The amount you're risking is 40. The amount you can make is 60. Risk to rewards, it's about a 150% possible. And you can see here that's all from selling a call higher. Instead of just buying one, you're just selling it. You can see it limits those gains. We have the downside limited. Like we said, you have a smaller downside because instead of a $90 loss possible, you're only risking 40. So now you're risking less but you still have a great upside of 150%. And you can see the gains are tapped. That's what the flat line means. That's what the flat line means here. Your gains and losses are fully tapped. You can't have unlimited of anything, which is good. It's great for traders not to have unlimited gains or losses in a scenario. So the smaller losses are great because of that. So smaller losses, smaller gains. And now let's talk about the time decay because this is what's keeping you out of the game and this is why you know it's, it's gonna be harder to be successful in this long term the time decay of a Tesla option this is one day till expiration I know you've done it don't pretend like you haven't you bought one day out options on Tesla and you lost 50% overnight look at these options 500 bucks in time decay this option costs nine hundred and seventy dollars you're losing more than 50% overnight from time decay I know you like Tesla I know you think it's gonna go higher most people do, but you don't need to YOLO your money overnight and wake up instantly to a 50% loss and then still try to have Tesla beat that by moving enough to pay for the time decay. Um, paying for the time decay is going to be the hardest thing you do as an options trader. So here's the scenario. The minimal time decay opportunity is you buy an option. So you bought the option with the 513 theta. And then you sell the option with the 504 theta. So when you sell it, 
it flips the negative sign to a positive. So instead of losing $504, you're getting $504 in a day. So if you're losing 513 and you're getting 504, the difference on the time decay is nine. So now you're losing nine bucks a day. So if I was in a Tesla spread, I'm now losing $9. As a percentage of the total cost, you know, we had the Tesla play over here. We'll just show you that real quick. I think it costs us $200 for Tesla. So that is 5% loss from time decay, 5%. Instead of losing 50 or 60% on zero days, one day out options. So again, as a percentage of the total investment, it's still not that much. And it can keep you in the game longer if you're not taking huge losses from something that isn't related to the setup or the movement of the, of the stock. If, if you are trying to control as many things as possible, controlling the time decay is key. And that will help you at least succeed in having a good setup actually pay you. And instead of having a good setup not pay you because you held it too long and time decay ate every profit you had. So again, risk to reward for that SPY setup, we had a $40 cost and then a $60 profit. So if you make the full amount, it's 150 percent possible gain. So what's a good risk to reward, Matt? Should I risk the whole debit spread? You know, if it goes to zero, that's fine. Not really. That would be dumb because unfortunately it's not, these spreads are never going to give good risk to rewards where you can let them go to zero. The spread alone, if it goes to zero, will only give you a 1.5 risk to reward, reward to risk. So you got to make sure you have stop losses at 30, 50, or even 20%, 10% down, because that will help you stay in the game even longer. The spreads are great for limiting losses and staying in the game, but having stop losses are baseline. Number one, the only way we're staying in the game long, you got to have stop losses. So here's the other idea. Spreads allow for passive income. So there's two types of spreads. Debit spreads, they cost you money. Credit spreads, they theoretically give you money. So the credit spreads, if we flip the options we're selling and buying, um, they will allow us to now pick up $9 a day. We'll talk about that more in a second. I know it's confusing. So that 513 option and the 504 option we were selling and buying, if we flip those, basically sell the higher theta and buy the lower theta, now we create this income opportunity. And we all know when risk to reward, we all know risk to rewards on our side when theta is on, on our side. So this Tesla option, it will be $200 possible income. And we have that $9 per day in our favor now. So now we could possibly make nine bucks a day, nine bucks a day, nine bucks a day. And then by the time expiration comes, as long as certain things happen, we'll collect the full 200. Um, but that is the, the one thing people are very excited about is the possible passive income opportunity. And lastly, we're going to go over strategies, advanced strategies, as well as how to utilize um, spreads late, putting them on late in a second. I want to go over fully in-depth spreads on Robinhood and show you how to implement them, show you how to find the risk to reward, and truly understand what needs to happen. This is not a full course. This isn't a full tutorial on the math behind it. If you're a math person and you want to understand the actual underlyings and how those are all related, head to my head to my course, Options Domination. It's at marketmovesmat.com. It's a full course on options and it has sections on spreads, iron condors, and more. But today we're just going to go over how to click them and what it means to you. Just the basics. You know, you guys don't care about formulas, hopefully. So here's SPY. SPY is currently at 476.27. And so that would tell us where to put our options and where you put your, your sell and your, your short, your long and your short option determines your risk to reward and how much you can make or lose. So for example, if I am bullish on SPY, I can do two things. I can do a call debit spread that's bullish and it offers better risk to reward than a put credit spread. So there's two things you can do if you're bullish and we'll show you what happens in those scenarios. So if SPY, if I'm bullish, I can buy any option I want. If you go 
further at the money, you get the better risk reward from what I can tell. So I'm gonna go a little bit in the money and then I'm gonna sell one. So if you sell one here, it's gonna create a debit spread. Here, it's a further debit spread. Um, I think it has a better risk reward, but we'll show you. If you sell anything lower, that would be bad. That's a credit spread, that's a bearish position. So make sure if you're gonna sell the option, you go higher. So again, I click buy on Robinhood and I click sell. Uh, any other platform, it's pretty similar, but this is the easiest, most visual, so I like to use it. So first off, let's just go with the first one above us. This will show us everything we need to know. As you can see, if you clicked it properly, it's gonna say call debit spread. This means it cost you money to get in the trade. It cost you $52. So that means the difference between the strike prices minus the cost is gonna be what you can make out of the trade. I know that was fast, but here's a perfect quick chart to understand that. Max profit is $48, which means you could possibly double your money if this happens. And it's awesome, it has it right here. SPY has to cross this little green dot for you to make max profit, 477, which is gonna be the higher strike price over here, 477. This means that the difference between the strike prices will be maximized, and if it's maximized, that's where you make the full possible profit in this trade, which is uh, not the best risk reward because it isn't even one-to-one -one at this point. Uh, you'd have to take a loss at like 50% down for this to make sense. But you can see the break-even point. You can see the max loss point. Basically, underneath the 476 strike will be a max loss because in that case, both options are going to be out of the money, which means they have no value. And when they have no value, um, there's no – this is worth, worth, worthless. So the cost of this is going to be zero. No one's going to pay for it. It's going to have no value. So that is a call debit spread. Let's just show you one more. Let's go out of the money now. And we're gonna buy one, sell one. So this is gonna show you a different risk to reward. Actually, it should be better because we are out of the money. So for this scenario, for SPY, if you were bullish, like super bullish, and you had higher conviction on this, if SPY went to 479 over it, you would make a lot more. Instead of one to one, you know, losing everything or doubling your, your money, you're spending 20 bucks, and again, it's the difference between the strike prices minus the cost, and you could make 80. So that's a better risk to reward chart because the green is higher than the red. So you can see right here, making 80 with only $20 risking. So that's beautiful. That's a really good risk reward, but the chance of this happening is very small. You can see right here, the chance of profit, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, it would be the opposite in this scenario. So let's say you're going to the top one here. This is if you're selling it, the chance of profit is 85, but you flip that. So for this scenario to happen, it's like 15%. So it's not a great long-term strategy unless you pair technical analysis with it and charting and momentum. But if you're just blindly entering great risk reward setups like this, you do have to understand the chance of profit and how it relates to the option. So this is, you subtract it by one, it's 15%. So 15% chance you make that full money. Even if you got in the middle of those strike prices, you could still double in this scenario. Um, and that, that's definitely possible. So SPY would have to move about three points, two and a half points on, in one single day, which is, is pretty crazy. That's uh, about a 1% move in the SPY. So still, let's go over the put credit spread scenario because this is where if you're still bullish on SPY, um, you can add this in and it helps you take advantage of decay. So tomorrow options open up, there's going to be instant decay. You can take advantage of this and still be bullish with a put credit spread. So this is where instead of buying the put first, you sell the put. So selling a put and then you buy the put lower. So lower, sorry, yeah, lower. So you're buying lower, any put lower. Uh, you can see the risk reward chart, see what makes sense for you. The lower you go, the more you risk, and the higher you go, the, the less money you get. So if we just go right to uh, the first one underneath it, you can see the max profit is 36, max loss is 64. So for a you know passive income, let this thing roll, 
you're never going to get like an even chart here or even like a, a higher profit than a loss because unfortunately when you sell options like this the time decay is on your side which means it's it's very hard to find stocks that are going to give you a higher you know green scenario than a red scenario you're pretty much going to lose more than you win if it goes against you in most option selling scenarios so the, the credit you can pick up is $35 and then the max loss is 64 which basically means you need about 1 0.5 to 2 of these trades to go correctly for you to make up for a loser. So you got to make sure you take stop losses on these as well. But again, when you have, when you have time to can your side, it's a little bit easier to win. So let's do one more scenario for a put credit spread. We'll go in the money here and then we'll go two strikes out. And so you can see right here, I'm giving myself a much more even curve. Um, I have two strikes out, so now the difference is $2 instead of one. So the total credit is 84, but the most I can lose is going to be like a dollar 20. So if I scroll down here, it's a dollar 15. So it's about one to one. We're almost there. Um, to get one to one is like the goal. And then if you can get over that, get more profit than a possible loss, that would be the ideal, ideal scenario because we all know options, you know, decay every day and if you have a good risk to reward like more profit than a possible loss and decay on your side it's a win-win completely so you can see right there i almost have an even setup um it wouldn't be good to trade for a credit spread because obviously that it's it's even but for, or for a debit spread but for a credit spread i like that so let's do two more scenarios and then we'll go on to the advanced strategies First off, we're going to go bearish positions. So if you are bearish on SPY, you could do the exact same thing we talked about. Let's do a different example. Let's do Tesla. Tomorrow, you think Tesla is going to drop. If it trades sideways, you would make money with a credit spread. So you don't even need stuff to drop or go directional for a credit spread to make money. In some cases, you just need the stock to not move. Just don't move, please. I got to make my monies. So tomorrow... It won't even give me tomorrow's. But Tesla, for a credit spread, if we do call credit, we have to sell first. So you're going to sell an option. It can be at the money. It can be slightly in the money. Um, it could be out of the money. You're going to get your better risk to reward kind of at this area I'm showing you here. And so we buy higher. So buying higher would give us a smaller premium, which would give us a higher credit. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go two strikes higher. That's a $10 possible credit. And so this has a lot of time on it, so it's going to have a better chart. Um, you can see down here, it almost has an equal profit and loss. So that's actually very exciting. And you can see over here, um, the strike prices are 10 so they're $10 apart, and the total credit is possibly 5 So that would be as if I was bearish. So here's what would need to happen on the it, for this scenario for me to make all the money. Is I have to go underneath this strike price at the time of expiration for me to collect the full 500 bucks. Very visual on the chart. We know what price is it. 10.75 um, would be my sub level before I hit that max loss. And then over here, um, we got 10.60 for the max gain. I flipped those. Yeah, 10.60 is max gain. So I need to go under 10.60. And then that's my max gain. If I go over 1070, that's my max loss. So that's why the chart's great. Very visual. It can show you the exact levels you need to cross as well as your break even. So the call credit spread, like I said, was bearish. I flipped it in my mind, but you could see underneath here, max gains because we're bearish. We need we need Tesla to drop next week for that to happen. Um, best scenario is to if Tesla just traded sideways. Um, our break-even point is exactly where we are, so we wouldn't lose any money in this trade or idea if Tesla just stayed at this exact level. So we'll flip over now to the debit spread for puts. This is if you're bearish on Tesla. It does offer, you know, instead of making 500 bucks, you can double 500 bucks or even triple it in some risk-reward scenarios. And so if I want to start this debit spread i have to buy first so we'll go out of the money on this one i'm going to buy the 1050 and then i have to sell lower selling lower allows me to create a debit spread which means 
Um, there's money I have to pay to get in, and it allows me to possibly double, triple, or make 50% if it happens. So we'll go super far apart, 20 points apart. You can see the maxed profit um, isn't, even, isn't even that great for the, the amount this thing needs to move. So for Tesla to make the most in this setup, we have to go underneath 1030. So we're gonna have to go down in Tesla about 50 bucks. Sorry, 1050, I keep messing. Yeah, no, 1030. So we have to go below 1030, 1030. And for us to go over 1050, that's gonna be our max loss. So we need this to go down. If it stays above 1050, that's the, where the max loss gets hit. That's where we lose our full investment of 720 bucks. So for the debit spread here, um, that would be brutal. And if we go to the risk reward just to see if it makes sense, the most we're gonna make in this is almost um, 200% honestly. So if this was at around 14, dollars $1,500, um, we would be making 200%. So this is a pretty good risk reward. And what I'm seeing is most options right now are paying about 150% possible. So let me just divide this by 720. And this is about 170. So it's a little bit more. And, and it's probably because it's super out of the money. So being out of the money allows it to offer just a better risk reward here. So let's try one more and just see if it changes the risk reward. And we'll go over the advanced strategies. So if we go at the money and we go... 20 points down. Um, you can see it's a very even chart, um, not as great. So you can almost make like 120% there. Um, but we'll show you how to maximize these spreads using bread alerts because you can find things that can pay 10x. You know, you can 10x your money with a spread, which is still mind blowing considering time decay is, is mitigated you doing that. But going through this, it, we're gonna start with off with the advanced strategies. Hopefully you understand what spreads are at this point. Debit spreads are directional. If it's a call, you want it to go up. If it's a put, you want it to go down. Credit spreads are reversals or you want it to do the opposite. So call credits are bearish, put credits are bullish. And credit spreads take advantage of time decay. Debit spreads still have time decay. They mitigate it, but they have better risk to reward where you can double your money instead of just making the premium like you can with credit spreads. So we'll go through the bearish spread strategy and this is if like you had a call right now and it was already in profit. So for this scenario, let's say you bought the 1,085 strike for Tesla and you bought it at $500. So it's currently trading at 850, which means it's up $350. So at this point, you could scale out. You may not have a day trade, so you might just leave it on overnight, risk the profits, or you could do something uh, which they call ghetto spreads on the internet, which is where you sell an option. So selling an option allows you to avoid a day trade, lock in a profit, or even sometimes even even eliminate a loss, which is insane to think about. And it's really it's really possible if you know where to put the strike prices. But what you could do is you can sell a strike lower. So instead of 1,085, you do 1,080. And that premium is about $1,000. So when you sell an option, you get it as credit. Credit is the possible money that could come into your account at the time of expiration. So that credit is $1,000. Um, the cost of the other option is $850 and the profit's $350. This is what it does. Again, $1,000 is credit. So that's into your account theoretically. $850, that is the cost of the option now. You have a locked-in profit of $350. And then you take the difference of the credit and the cost, which is 150. So you have an extra profit now from this trade if you are bearish on Tesla. So you bought calls on Tesla. You're bullish. You were bullish. You made money. You're up about 50%, maybe even 60. And now you're bearish. So you're bearish on Tesla. You don't have a day trade. What can you do? You can sell a call lower. And this does lock in that profit of 350 and it gives you an additional possible profit of 150. So that's amazing. So that means the total possible gains in this trade could be about $500 if Tesla finishes under 1080. So if it drops under the short strike price, you can make that extra 150 and you can keep that 350 from your initial trade. 
But if Tesla goes higher, you can actually give up some of your profits. So a credit spread is good. A late credit spread is good if you know the reversal is coming. It's bad if you want to get more profits and you think it's going to go higher because you could lose a, a little bit more in this setup. So you could lose about $300, it looks like. I haven't done the math. Um, so you could lose your full profit if you're wrong. So credit spreads are dangerous to put on late in that scenario. But if, if you're right twice, which sometimes could happen, you could profit from both the up and the down from it. So if you're bullish on Tesla, here's what to do. You know, you got that 350 profit. How do you lock it in? Not use a day trade. If you're still bullish, can you make money if it goes up? We, what we can do here is put on a call debit spread. So you have that option, the same one we talked about earlier, cost 850. You can sell a call higher. Selling, selling a call higher would create a credit of 623, a call at $625. So that is money into your account. It's money offsetting the cost of the initial trade and the what you're holding currently. This does not protect your full premium. That's the only downside. As you can see here, you paid 500 bucks to get into this trade. You're selling a credit for 625. So the difference between those is the only profit you're protecting. So $125 is protected profit. It's likely not to go anywhere unless some crazy thing happens. So you had a 350 profit by selling that option the 1,090 higher, you're protecting a portion of the 350 profit and you're allowing yourself to make money on the upside if the upside happens. So if, if Tesla keeps going, you do make money in that scenario too. So if it keeps going past 1,090, you will make an extra $275. Adding that to your 350, you're making almost like $700 in this, about $625 it looks like. So you're protecting profit and you still have a great upside. This is a very awesome strategy for momentum players because you're likely never to lock in things at the right time. You're likely to miss future gains. And this is one scenario where you can protect gains and not miss future gains. I love the spread, the debit spread for that reason. I love the call credit spread. If you are wrong about a trade and you want to turn a loser into a winner or you're right about a trade and you think it's going to reverse. In that scenario, you could make money to the other side. The best part about these spreads, like I said, you can put them on late. You can also take them off if they make you money. So let's say this spread here, only if you purchase them separately. So in this scenario, you bought this Tesla call. It made you money. And then you put on a call. You, you sold a call for this strike here. It's $625. Let's say Tesla drops. So your long call loses money. Your short call here actually makes you money. It's going to be less valuable because you're short. The more the value goes down, the more money you make. So if this value went down to like $400, you could buy it back for a $200 profit and then keep your other call on Tesla if you're bullish. So in this scenario, you make money from like the, the volatility and the price movements. And I'll show you really quick what that looks like on a chart. But all this is is, you know, stocks move up and down over time. You can utilize this volatility and the upward and downwards movement from just putting on a short call, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off. If you have like leap options and you're bearish right now, like ARC hit a great level of resistance today, I put on a short call, ARC drops, I buy it back for a profit. I still keep my initial call, but I was using that call to utilize and leverage a short call to protect myself. And then if I protected myself enough and I felt comfortable, I took it off, made money, easy peasy. <laughs> there's, there's scenarios where it's not easy peasy, but uh, <laughs> that's exactly what I would be doing. So. If, if you're trading the markets, you can protect yourself at any moment and then take off that protection if you don't want it. And that protection can make you money, which is exciting. So here is the last thing. How do we rock debit spreads 
that could 10x? You know, how do we even find them? And this is where I go to breadalerts.com, which is an option selling and large order options data platform so you can track big institutions, sell the highest premium options every single week. But here, I use the option selling tab to actually find my debit spreads because these show me like the most volatile options that have the biggest movements, the most time decay, and you can use that time decay to make money as an option seller. You can also use these volatile options to create some insane debit spreads. So on this chart here, um, I saw this earlier. I was a big fan of one of the pot stocks like CGC and Tilray. Um, and we're going to go through both of those and show you just what can happen next week. So first off, ACB was one of them. And I just basically found it by sorting the premium column. And I saw ACB on the top 10. And you can see AMC, a lot of stocks that are super high premiums. So if I go to ACB here, you can see next week's options. If I was going to sell, I would buy a call and I would sell a call. So that would create a debit spread and that would give me more possible gains if it was in the correct direction. So the chance of profit is like 9%, which is less than that Tesla option we had earlier. But the risk reward is just a mountain here. It's a mountain of green. So you're risking five bucks to make $45. It's mind blowing. So that's a possible 10X with options with a spread and the time decay is minimal. So if we just check the time decay, it's about one dollar per day, 1.1. And over here, it's about one. So the difference is like 0. 0.00001 times 100. It's very minimal. But you could see this would make a terrible deb uh, call credit spread because the risk reward is so good for like a debit spread. So a volatile option like this, if it moved in our way, um, there could be insane gains and you're not risking a lot. You know, it's five bucks to get into the trade. The $5 could turn into 15, 20, 30, who knows? And it could be insane. So again, you don't need to risk everything in a trade. Um, you can add protection and utilize that protection in many different ways. So that's pretty much all I got today, guys. There's a lot of downsides to spreads, which we'll talk about in the more upcoming videos like what you should be afraid of what can go wrong but this is a full tutorial on how they work why they can be utilized you know what strategies you can use and what types they are if you want to see our last video on the best options trading small accounts style and opportunity and strategy for next year check it out in the video to the right of me uh, we just put that out last week so i'll see you guys later thank you for joining peace out